If we gotta do it, you can do it. So this is what, what, we, what we're witnessing here is courtship between a long established pair. This is exactly what it is. So there's this goose-like honking, they do bill clacking, they actually bow towards one another and sometimes they do what's known as a gam where they open up and they stretch open their wings and they actually dance for one another. So this is a pair that's probably been together for, for, for many years looking at the slightly older male which is on the nest at the moment, female wandering around it. Remember, albatrosses are amongst the longest lived of any birds. They are birds that were banded on Bird Island as breeding adults that were recovered, and this was 25, at least, or rather in 1955, that are still alive today. So if you bear in mind that a female breeds ordinarily at the age of about eight, a male ordinarily at the age of about 11. These are incredibly long-lived birds. So those birds are at least 55, 56, 57 years old and probably older still. So we're probably looking at lifespans of about 70 years, which is with very low mortality, which is one of the reasons why the long-line fishing industry is so detrimental to overall populations because all you need is one or two dying to heavily impact the population. So this this population on Pryan Island has decreased much like the, the population across South Georgia by 30% in the last 25 years. Almost entirely as a result of long line fishing. They, they feed by flying, crisscrossing the ocean surface looking for primarily dead and rotting sea food. Anything from krill to cephalopods and, uh, and any fish. And they obviously use this incredibly well-developed olfactory sense to do this. All tube noses have it, but it's believed that amongst albatrosses it's the best developed of, of any bird. And they think that they might even be able to, to recognize specifically an individual by its smell. So they locate these, the food sources over this vast ocean using an olfactory sense. And obviously long liners where you have rotting, essentially dead fish on hooks are a perfect prey. So they dip down, they reach down, and they never go much deeper than about a meter and a half. They reach down and they grab the bait. Lines as they go out in order to drop the bait below four feet before the wandering albatross can reach down and grab it. That's one way of doing it. You can also put out the line at night. And recently what they're doing is they're feeding it out through a tube. So the tube actually holds the, the line much deeper in the water, pays out the line, and uh, avoids bycatch of albatrosses. And in the well-monitored South Georgian toothfish industry, they've, they've, in the last five years, lost only about 20 albatrosses, mostly through being entangled in, in fishing lines. None through actually reaching down and getting the bait. The problem is that in the last 15 odd years, you actually have a recruitment problem where you're not having new birds coming into the population because they've, they've been taken.